I have now released three videos on Grand Seiko watches that I absolutely adore. And there is a lot to love about the brand. From the unique Japanese perspective of watchmaking, to massive innovations like the spring drive movement, Seiko and Grand Seiko appeal to a collector who wants amazing watches with a unique identity and a charming heritage to boot. I could gush over them all day long. In fact, I have a video of me doing just that, gushing over Grand Seiko and why I've been so won over to the brand. Leaving everyone with the burning question, so bitch, why don't you own one then? It's a good question. My name is Brittany, aka Watch Gringa, and on this channel I make videos about watches. If you're new here, I always like to highlight my awareness of how strange my accent is. I'm a Canadian who's just lived in England a little bit too long, and it's resulted in this monstrosity that you are now beholding. <laughs> But back to the topic at hand, Grand Seiko, and the three reasons why I haven't added one to my collection yet. Now, some of the reasons why people don't like Grand Seiko are, in my opinion, stupid. I've heard people say, ew, but the name Seiko is on the dial. While I see why that association, and I understand why that association with Seiko can be off-putting, to me, that's just plain snobbery. I don't care if the name Seiko is on the dial. I don't care if it's called Leprechaun's Bananas. Is it a good watch? Is it cool? Is it something different? Get over yourself and stop pretending like you're better than the mighty Seiko. Or some people are deterred by the value retention or lack thereof. While I do understand, especially in this economy, this is never a good reason to buy or not buy a watch in the first place. Wrist watches are a speculative asset bubble. The tides shift and turn, what's in vogue comes and goes. And we're even seeing that now and living in that now as the bubble has a bit of a correction and who knows where this ends. But for me, the top three reasons why I haven't purchased a Grand Seiko is the wearability, design language, and the cult of Grand Seiko. Now this is probably the biggest reason why I haven't bought a Grand Seiko yet. I love what the brand is and what it stands for, the innovations and accomplishments of the past and the present, but on the wrist, I don't know, it's just always been kind of not right. They've always felt really, really nice, but not quite that perfect match that makes me feel like, I need to buy this now. This needs to come home with me. I can't live without it. I've heard a myth that apparently, there are people who can live without wristwatches. Apparently it's not a necessity, but what kind, of, what kind of quality of life could there be? What kind of quality of life is there? With Grand Seiko, you know you're getting out of this world dials, top tier finishing, watchmaking that has so much care and devotion put into it. But if it's just not right on the wrist, for me, I, I can't buy it. The number one selling feature for me is always how does it sit on the wrist? How does it make me feel? And I find GS watches just to be a little bit too clunky and chunky for me. I don't know. I, I feel like it wouldn't take much. Grand Seiko just needs to put half the energy that they put into their dials, into their bracelets, and it's game over. A slight taper and an overall better bracelet design would go a long way. I know it's such a watch geek thing to complain about, but I really think bracelets are one of the most overlooked thing that affects so much of the wearing experience. I know for a fact that this is the main reason why I choose Rolex over Omega. I prefer Omega as a brand. I want to be that girl who collects Omegas. But there's always something in that wearability link that's just missing for me. Also, this reason hasn't been officially listed, but it's worth noting. Grand Seiko prices keep creeping up and up and up. The prices are now comparable to Rolex prices. And I just don't like them enough to spend this kind of money on one. But this isn't about you, Rolex. I'm sorry to have said the R word. I'm sorry. My Rolex fangirl's coming out. <laughs> Now the watch design language that speaks to you is highly personal to you. Some people blim and love the Grand Seiko design language and some people it's more not for me. You know, I feel torn on it really. Every Grand Seiko I've had in for review, I've really, really liked, 
but nothing I fully loved. I've liked the dial, I've liked the case shape, I've been impressed by the Zeratsu polishing, but there isn't a design element that I love. A big problem for me is that most of their watches are neither sports watches nor dress watches. This could be the very thing that you love. You might say, no gringa, it's versatile. And you're right. But to my eye, they've always kind of looked like a dress watch that got confused, took a wrong turn, and accidentally ended up in a sporty case. And it confuses my brain. I'm simple. I like my dress watches to look like dress watches, my sports watches to be sports watches. And that area in between, that go anywhere, do anything kind of vibe, I want it to air more on the side of sporty. A sporty, versatile piece over a dressy, versatile piece. This is just personal taste though. You might disagree completely and neither of us is right or wrong. So there's this attitude I've been noticing around the watch enthusiast community. And it's, if you don't own a Grand Seiko or aspire to own one, if you don't like Grand Seiko, then you're not a true watch enthusiast. You're into watches for the wrong reasons. You're just an investment Rolex hype boy. And this is complete and utter crap. I hate this. At the beginning of this video, I was saying I hate that snobbery of not choosing Grand Seiko because Seiko's on the dial. Yeah, I equally hate this reverse snobbery of people thinking they can gatekeep who a true enthusiast is by something as arbitrary as taste. If you follow this channel, you already know I'm a bit of a Rolex fangirl. I'm a real lover and collector of Rolex watches. I've never flipped a Rolex. I have no desire to do it. I just love the watches. The design language speaks to me. Just simple, rugged watches that are insanely reliable. I like them. I'm not more or less of a collector or enthusiast because I like Rolex or Cartier. I really hate this idea and attitude of we can gatekeep who the true enthusiasts are. I'm not sure if you've realized this, but watch collecting is already a small niche thing. The last thing we need to be doing is dividing each other and sectioning each other off and causing quarrel in an already niche thing. Like, damn, just celebrate each other. You like Grand Seiko, I like Cartier, he likes Patek, he likes some niche weird micro brand. Who cares? <laughs> Watches are wonderful and fantastic. Wouldn't life be boring if we all liked the exact same things? I'm just stoked for anyone who finds a watch and they love it and it feels perfect and right for them. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's Grand Seiko, Tudor, Omega, who cares? I don't care. Time pieces are just awesome and you do you. There are so many reasons to love so many different brands. And there are so many reasons to love Grand Seiko. I love Grand Seiko. I'd like to join the cult one day, but for now, no offering has spoken to me quite enough to buy it. But I really cheer for GS. I love getting hands on with their watches and I truly don't have a bad word to say about them. For now, I continue my quest to hopefully become a Grand Seiko girl one day. But I'm just, I'm just rambling on. Let's end this video here. As always, guys, don't forget to do those sweet, wonderful things to feed the YouTube algorithm gods. So give this video a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. And until next time, you beautiful, fabulous, wonderful watch nerds.